All right, well, we will get started. Welcome. Um, if you do not have your mic muted, go ahead and do that. I am going to be running kind of the back channel and then Katie will be taking over here in a minute and I'll be watching the, um, the chat line there up in the top right hand corner. So if questions do come up, just type them in there and then I will be watching that closely and I will politely interrupt Katie um, so we can address it with the whole group. So um, again, this is being recorded. So if you have future need for it, we will have it um, available for you. Or if it's something you find beneficial and wanna share with your team or school or whatever, you can, um, you'll have access to this after we're done being live. So, uh, so I'm Danae and uh, Danae Gothard, and I have been in ed tech for, this is my ninth year, I'm going into my ninth year. Um, all elementary schools, I had a little bit of experience in secondary in some of the special schools in the past, um, but now I'm back to all elementary. If you want in the chat a minute, you can let us know what your grade level is just so we can see um, if there's, you know, just so we can kind of tailor it a little bit if you have certain needs at your grade level. Um, and then Katie, go ahead. I'm Katie Schmolt. I've been an ed tech for the last four years, all at elementary schools. Previous to that, I worked at Timview High School as a social studies teacher, and I love both. Awesome. All right. So just going through this little slideshow, there's just a couple slides here at the beginning before Katie starts. But um, so we started Tuesday, was that yesterday? <laughs> yesterday, um, doing these little mini professional developments in what we're kind of calling the Canyons U. Um, so if you remember at Tech Summit, if, you've done, if you did the in-person Tech Summit last week, or if you're working on the online version this week, uh, they'll reference in your professional, or what is it called? In your personal learning plan that you're gonna be creating, um, you'll have access to what is called Canyons U. It's actually a Canvas course that has, I don't know, a couple, few dozen, different topics um, and information that we've pulled together that you can do on your own. And then of course we are doing these um, little 30 minute mini PDs for this week and next week before, um, well, before school was going to start. Um, so there might be some more opportunities uh, after after next week. We're, we're just kind of going with the flow right now. Um, so this is the list of all of the other courses. If if you find that this is beneficial and you want to do it again, we're doing it next week on the 13th. You can also let your other team members know if that's something you find that they might um, be interested in. So uh, just a reminder, here's our MTSS framework. So everything we do kind of ties back to um, what the district has put together for, for our framework. You received this little flyer in your email, which is probably why you're here today, um, with uh, the schedule of all of our the courses again. Um, and I think you got that a couple days ago from your ed tech or from one of your coaches. So, so for today, we're doing the Canvas Google LTI, and our learning intentions for today, we're going to use the Google LTI. Um, to embed a file onto a page that students can view and have access to. We're also going to embed a file into an assignment as a template um, for that student uh, manipulation and submission. So you'll know you're gonna be successful when you can embed files into the Google LTI on pages for viewing and create assignment templates. And so Katie, I think you, are going to take it away from here. So again, welcome. We appreciate you taking your time to be here. And if you have questions, again, just as a reminder, put them in the chat. And while Katie's presenting, I will be running that little back channel. So enjoy. Will you push stop presenting? Perfect. Yeah, there you go. Okay, welcome everybody. Um, I thought we would start out today 
um, by talking about some Google tools that you could look into using and how to create your own template. Um, first off, if you just Google um, graphic organizers um, for Google Slides or for Google Drawings, people have already created things that look like this. Um, and so then your students could just go in um, and there's a text box and they could type the topic sentence. So just know you can Google different things and you can find things already created. Like all of these were free. Um, so I recommend you do that. The second thing is I'm going to show you just really quickly how you can make your own templates. Katie. Do yep. Do you want to put the link to that folder in the chat? That way they have access to it. While you had it pulled up, I'm just. Um, so thinking. all of these are to Google Drawings. So this symbol is Google Drawings. So just be aware that that's what this folder is. Okay, so, and you can Google tons of more. Okay, now to create your own template, you would go to your Google Drive and then you'd push new. We'll start with a Google Docs template because I think that's a little bit easier. So you have your document here. Um, we'll do, welcome to the new year. Um, I'm going to highlight this, make it big, enter it, and I'm going to go down. Now what I would want to do is I want to make it so my students can fill in information. So the most basic way is um, this. What is your name? And they would type right here. Um, so if you're, you're like, oh, I'm not even ready, um, you could do that. Um, type here. So that's like the most simple way. And then you'd come down here and do the next question. Here's actually what I would probably do. I would come up here to insert table and I would do, you can make your table as big as you want. Let's make a, let's do a one table for now. Um, so right here is where I'd write the question. Question, okay. So what is your name? And then if you just push tab on your keyboard, it's going to make a space here. Um, and this is where they would type in their name. I would push tab again. How old are you? Tab makes another space. Um, and then what is your favorite candy? And you would be doing this with different questions related to your subject. I might come up here and say directions. Um, in the blue square, type your answer. Um, and I'm going to make all this a little bit smaller. Okay, um, and I said in the blue square, so I need to turn this square blue. Um, so to turn that square blue up in the toolbar, you can change the background color. And I'm going to change all of those to blue just so they're aware of where they're typing their answers. So this is a super simple way to make a template. Um, so Cinda asked, and maybe she can clar help me clarify, says, can you explain how to turn a Word doc into a template in Google Drive? So, so I, I'm wondering if she wants to import an existing Google, an existing Word document, you know, into, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, that's exactly, I have a bunch of Word docs that we have in Google, and when I turned in an assignment trying to do this on my um, Canvas course, she couldn't read any, any of it, and she said that it was because it was a Word doc, not a Google doc, and so I, I really want to use all these that I already have and turn them into templates. Okay, so the first thing is you could go to new file. Actually, here's something you should check. Up here in the gear, um, there's a settings. You want to convert your uploads to a Google Doc. Um, I have mine checked. This might not be the right option for everyone, so just think about it before you check it. I want all of my documents to be converted to a Google Doc when they're 
inserted. So now if that's checked, what that means is if I pull in, um, if I come in here and do a new file upload or I pull a Word document in, new file upload, um, documents, um, I don't use Word very much, it turns out. Um, downloads. Yeah, I have no documents. Um, PDF, do you see any docs in this? Um, so if I had a document and now I uploaded I it to myself, sorry. I had my mic on or off. If you went back up to the top, you had one about five down, it looked like. Up towards the top. That is the top. Okay, go down a little bit. I guess I can make one real quick. Okay. No. And this example. One, two, three, four. Save. I just save it to the desktop. Okay, so I just saved that to my desktop. I'm going to do a file upload. I'm going to go to my desktop. Right here is my dot doc. I'm going to open it in here. And what's going to happen down here is it's going to convert it um, to a Google Doc. So there's the W symbol. And now in here you have the Google Doc symbol. Um, so now it's a Google Doc and it's been converted into a Google Doc. Does that answer your question? Yes. Perfect. Um, your other option is if you do have a W in here, I think if you right click on it, you may be able to open with Google Docs you may also be able to make a copy or there might be a convert button in there. So look into those things. Yeah, if you don't have that settings box checked that she showed you at the very beginning and you just pulled in Word documents, they would stay as Word documents, but then you could do that right click, which she just did and open it if you wanted to just kind of pick and choose which one, you know, individually, which ones you want to open with. Okay, thank you. Great question. Yep. I love it. Okay, so, um, yeah, so we made we made a document we want our students to edit. Your other thing is you could make documents like this. So you saw this style guide. They made it with a table. Um, they used the fill color here. And this is just information they want students to have. Um, so you can make, like, content pages with pictures and things here. Katie. Um, uh -huh. Sorry, sorry. Um, from this main page in your drive, will you show them the settings and where to click the convert button again? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so can you all see my mouse? It's really big right now. Okay, up here is a gearbox. You click settings, and then it's not storage, it's convert uploads. So the second one down, you want to make sure it's checked. Most people, it's okay to have this checked unless you are really concerned about taking it back to Microsoft Word. Um, having it checked allows you to use Google Docs to edit things. Be aware that when you convert your documents to Google Docs, some of the formatting may change a little bit, especially if you used a lot of fancy fonts. So just be aware of that possibility. Okay, so the final way you could make templates, which is actually my favorite, is new Google Slides. And what I do is I go to File, Page Setup, and I change it from widescreen to custom. And I do either 11 by eight and a half or eight and a half by 11. And this just means your students can fill it out online, but if you have a student who who has, for whatever reason, they can't use a computer for that day, you could also come in here and do file print so you have that copy of it. So on Google Slides, what you can do is you could add a background 
um, a diagram of the water cycle. So actually I want a blank diagram of the water cycle. Great, here's one. Click on the image, click insert, push done. So now I have this water cycle background. If you have it as a background, students can't move the image. And now what I would do as a teacher is I would add a text box. Um, and I would actually change the fill color with the paint bucket again, green. Copy that, put that here. Put that here and put that here. Um, then the student's job is type your answer here. Um, and I would have that in each box. And so I have this template where they can just fill in this organizer. You can make other templates um, by using the shapes. So I could make a Venn diagram very quickly um, in here. So I make two circles. You have to come in here and you have to make the transparency more if you want them transparent. So that is going into the fill color, doing a custom color with the plus sign and bringing the transparency down. So there you go. You have a Venn diagram graphic. And then what you would do is you'd come here and you would click the text box. And I would draw a text box in that circle. Click the text box symbol again, draw in this one. Click it again, draw it here. Come up here and I would say topic one. Make that big. And center it. And then over here, copy that and do topic two. So there you go. There's two different examples. Actually, we have three different examples of things, templates you can use. So now what do you do once you have these things? What you're going to do is you're going to go into your Canvas account. I'm on my home page right now. And I'm going to edit my home page. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to embed a Google Doc that you just want students to view and to see. You don't want them necessarily changing anything about it. Um, first off, you can drag this down to make your page a little bit bigger. Then you're going to click on the page where you want your, your um, Google Doc. This is the formatting tools. On the second row of the formatting tools, there's a V. Um, called the more external tool. Notice it's a blue V. You're going to click that. These are a lot of different tools you can use. You're going to go down about halfway down to Google Apps. Notice these are not in alphabetical order. So you just kind of have to look for them. So I'm going to click Google Apps. And this might take a second to load. And what it does is it takes you to your, it's connected to your CSD Docs account. So if you've never authorized with your CSD Docs account before, it might ask you to authorize. Um, so just be aware of that. I find it easier to search right here um, unless you know the exact folder that it's in. So I just search. Um, Bitmoji classrooms are a huge things, thing right now. Um, so right here, I'm going to take this um, Bitmoji engineering room, um, and you have two options. You can embed or you can link. If you embed, what that means is it's going to take your slideshow or your document and it's going to put it right in your page. If you link, it's just going to put a link on your page, which they then have to click, and then it opens a new tab. I'll show you what both looks like. So we'll embed this one. So now here's my page and here's my little Bitmoji classroom. So I'm going to come down here and push save. So right here, what this is, is it's a, it's a slideshow with only one slide, but what students can do is they can come in here and they can still click on the different books um, in that little library and they can watch a video. Um, so that's a Google slideshow right there.
So I'm going to go back to edit. And I'm going to show you what the link looks like. So I'm going to put my cursor where I want it. I'm going to do more external tools. Scroll down to Google Apps. Um, let's do the emoji again. Um, just do the exact same one. And we're going to do a link this time. So notice it just looks like a blue link. And then that means if students are going to see this page, they would click this and then it would take them to the actual big um, slideshow. So I like embedding them a lot because they're right there in the page. You could also embed documents in here. So put my cursor there, go to the V, go to Google Apps. I'm going to look for Canvas. I think this is it. We're going to just try that one. I'm going to embed this. Yep, so now when students come to my class, They can click these links on this slideshow. If I had more than one slide, I could go to the next slide, but this only has one slide. Um, you can also read this document right here. Um, so that's how that works. Any questions about just embedding material? Is that good? I'm not seeing any on the chat right now. How about um, when you embed a worksheet that you want them to fill out, but they, I always get mixed up with um, how they, to give them a copy that I don't want them to change and then how to get a copy that will automatically download in their Google Drive mm -hmm. and they can do their own and submit it and not change the original. I, I probably sound stupid, but that's where I got really mixed up last year. Nope, that leads us right into our second learning intention for today, so that's perfect. Um, so like, uh, was it Aaron? Um, like Aaron was saying, this way is just so they don't change anything. So you're just embedding it so they can see the information, they're not changing anything. Now, say you want them to have an assignment, one of these templates we just made, um, and you want them to fill it out and you want it back. Here's how you do that. So first off, you're going to go to your modules. You're going to pick what module you want it in. So it could be your week one module or your social studies module. I just named it Google LTI module. You're going to follow the title of your module over to the plus sign. And this type of thing only works in assignment. So to make a document for students to change, you have to be in assignment. Um, that embedding code that I talked to you about at the start just a minute ago will also work in assignment, quiz, page, discussion. It will work in any of those things. You can embed anything you want in any of these other things. But if you want students to change something, you have to think of it as an assignment and you have to mark it that way. So you have an assignment, you click new assignment, Google LTI um, graphic organizer. Then you push add item. Then you click on the title like you usually do so you can come into the editing page. Now you're going to push edit Right here, you can write directions. Um, please fill out this graphic organizer. I also like to include this instruction to make the graphic organizer bigger. Please click the blue link below that says, oh, this one will probably say untitled actually because I didn't save it. Um, and you'll see what I mean by that in just a second. Okay, then you scroll down and you give it points. If you want to give it points, 10 points. Um, and then what you do is you do submission type. 
Um, real quick, rubrics. Is that something on, this is questions for Danae. Do you remember rubrics in the LTI? Being part of something we need to teach? Yeah. No. Like just, isn't. if you add a, a Google doc and you want to use a rubric, you have to add the rubric first. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. I remembered. Yeah. Okay. That's correct. Okay. So I'm talking about rubrics. I don't know if you guys are to the point where you're using rubrics yet. Google LTI is the only weird thing with rubrics. So if you wanted to use a rubric, you title it, you write your directions, then you come down and you push save. Then you're able to add your rubric, which is in a really weird spot. If you add your rubric after you put your Google assignment in there, you break the links and it just ruins everything and your rubric, rubric doesn't show up. So if you want a rubric, you have to do it before you add the LTI. So, and that's how you add the rubric. Great rubric. There you go. I have a rubric. Um, also, so you know, if you do a rubric on an LTI assignment, the rubric's hard for students to find. So what I like to do is I like to take a screenshot of this rubric. So to take a screenshot, you do Command Shift 4 on your keyboard and you get this little cursor and you bring that up, take a picture. Then you come in here to edit. And then what I would do is I would come here to images, upload new image, choose file, take that screenshot, open rubric for your alt text and upload. And that way the students can see the rubric right there in the assignment details. Okay, so you come in here. Now we're actually going to attach the LTI. You've added points. What you really need to look at is this submission type. So this is the most important step for the Google LTI. What you're going to do is you're going to change it from no submission, which means they've done something in class and you're just grading them for it, to external tool. Um, so external tool is where you need to go. Then you don't type anything there. You just push find. So I'm just going to push find. These are all different things that you could connect to Canvas. Um, so some of these you might want to ask your ed tech about. What we're going to do is we're going to go to Google Docs Cloud Assignment. And what you do is you click on that. And then once again, it's easiest to search for your assignment. Um, unless you left it untitled. <laughs> and then you can come down here. Okay, so this is an example of something I did in a classroom before. Identifying and sorting coins hyperdoc. And it's a Google Slides. And I push submit. Right here, it looks like you're like, did I do anything? Yes, you did something. You push select. Now you scroll down. You notice this filled in automatically. You can change this if you want. And now I'm going to save and publish. So this is what it will look like. Um, it will have the title. You have your directions. You have your rubric. But down here, students will just see a little PowerPoint presentation. and. They can still go through the PowerPoint presentation, but I want you to teach your students to click on this blue link. That's why I said, please click the blue link. Um, and so when they click the blue link, then it opens this bigger. As the teacher, if you click that blue link, you're going to change your, your copy in your CSD docs. If a student clicks this or clicks this, they have their own copy. Um, and so they can go through this and change it and add whatever they want to it. And one thing to add to that, when when you do as a student, when they add, when they do exactly what she just did, it, it files it automatically in their Google Drive in a folder called Canyons School District. So the first time they do that, this out of the you know out of the blue canyon school district folder will show up and then anytime you do this again and again and again throughout the year that 
the stuff will be filed in that folder. So they may want to move it to, you know, their own kind of folder or whatever, but it automatically goes into a folder called Canyons School District. And Aaron, my guess is that inside of that Canvas folder, there's individual folders for each class. So it is being filed into a subject folder. Yeah. So that I, will happen kind of automatically. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to shuffle into having like their notebook not be a physical thing, obviously, this year and have it be that. And I just really want to make sure because I'm going to start naming everything by number. So hopefully it will like sort itself nicely for the kids. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And if it doesn't, they can by all means open that folder and then start to kind of put folders within that folder to start to organize themselves. But um, I don't think it will autom I, I don't know. I would think they would automatically go into different folders based off of the course they were in. So like your stuff will go into a folder that's your name, your other teach, you know, the other teachers will go into the folders that are their names. Danae, will you share your screen and just show them that assignment from the student perspective and especially the submit button? Yep, and while I'm pulling that up, I left Deborah's question at 225. So read that and then if you wanna answer that while I'm pulling this up. It goes with what you were saying, so I waited to make sure if you already covered it. <laughs> And Katie, what was your course called? A Schmolt. And you probably just have an invite at the top of your screen if you didn't already accept it. I think I already accepted it. Oh, there it is. Okay. Um, you're not sharing your screen yet, though. Yep, I was just getting it pulled up. There we go. So did that answer that, I think, Deborah's question? Um, I don't think so. I was. My question was... Uh, for instance, in math, when we have a worksheet that we like or the workbooks that the kids are using now in secondary, is there a way to turn that into an LTI, even though when we save it, it saves as a PDF? Um, I can show you after we're finished with all of this about how to do that. Okay, okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, Katie, I'm in, I'm a student now in Katie's class. This was the Google LTI that she just added for our little test. So again, I'm the student now. This is what the student sees after it loads. Down here, so see how it's teeny tiny? That's where she was saying, open it up. Now, you know, do your thing go through and do your activities Would or whatever. Would you change something on the last slide or something just so I can show them? Drag those coins. There's some coins on the side. So that's what's really cool about using the LTI is like they can drag things around. Okay, now you want me to just close this? Yep, and so your students can close that tab two when they're done, but you need to remind them to push submit. Submits right over here. Go ahead and submit that and then stop sharing your screen. Okay, so now from my side. Um, from the teacher's side. Now I can go in here. So I have my assignment and I can go to speed grader. And I can see Danae is going to load her assignment and I can go through each page and I can say, I can add little notes or text or whatever I want here. Could cross this out. <laughs> um, right here, I could do the rubric, save and leave comments. Um, so that's how that works with the LTI. Yeah, and you know, the, obviously this was just a 30 minute quick little, you know, dose of this. If you're wanting to do this and have a plan, you know, in your mind, I want to do this worksheet, reach out to your ed tech and they can, you know, get an appointment with you and they'd be happy to sit and do all of this with you, you know, real time. 
the first time, you know, the first or second or third time you need, you know, to kind of be walked through it. Um, you know, these are just kind of an introductory, like, oh, what is that? Will that work for what I'm looking for? Um, Cause it, you know, we, we do lots of classes on these and sometimes they're even two hour long classes, so. Yep, so just a reminder, just to recap over what we did today is we made some templates using Google Docs and Google Slides. And then we came in and we can add pages and assignments to um, our um, canvas. And then we go in and we can embed assignments into pages, discussions, assignments, anywhere that has this more external tools, you can embed something by going to Google Apps and searching for it. Or if you want, oh, okay. If you want, you can go into assignments and you can embed something for students to view by going to add assignment, new assignment, add item, go into that item, come up here to edit, change your details, directions right here. And your main thing is changing submission type. Notice up here, you also have this more external tools. So you could embed a slideshow up there, but students won't be able to edit it. So you could still come down here to Google Apps, but this would just be for them to review content. To have them change content, you come down to submission type, external tool, find, all the way down to Google, and then you find your tool there. So, and then you push select, and then it will upload there. Okay, so that is um, the end of our content. I was going to take a few minutes to answer a question about PDFs. Um, yes, I was gonna say there was one about PDFs. So it sounds... Should we have that on the recording or should we do that off recording? What do you think? Um, we'll go ahead and stop the recording because then I asked somebody else to stay on as well about doing something with videos. So yeah, hey, that's me. Okay. If you're watching this and you're interested about PDFs and changing them, talk to your ed tech coach. They can help you get that. Okay, we're going to stop the recording. Okay, thanks for coming. If you're hopping off, if you're staying on, feel free. We'll be here and 